Hey, what's up, AML family? Welcome back. Happy 4th of July to you all. I'm out here today with a very nice young lady that's gonna help us, you know, share light on addiction. What's your name, dear? Carolyn. Carolyn? Mm-hmm. Nice to meet you, Carolyn. Nice to meet you. Thank you. How old are you? 30. When is your birthday? October 2nd. Okay, are you a Scorpio? Libra. Oh, Libra. Yo, shout out to the Libras we out there. <laughs> Where are you from? Florida. Florida? Mm-hmm. How long have you been down in Kensington now? Like five years. Uh, me and my baby daddy moved up here like five years ago to basically like be with his mom, I guess. To be with his mom? That's yeah. where y'all moved? Well, we moved to the northeast side. And then we just, like, he was running down here, so I started running after him down here, and then uh -huh. we was both running down here. <laughs> yeah. Where is he now? Um, somewhere. Right so, so you do still see him? Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes. And are you guys still together? Something like that. I don't know, it's just running, running, like, you know? Yeah. And to have a drug addiction and a relationship at the same time is like... But, you know, he's all I got here, so, yeah. Right. When you came to Kensington, what was your first impression of it? Ain't nothing else like this place. Nowhere. I've been in plenty of hoods. I've been <laughs> hoods all over the place. and nothing like this place. Where are your family? Florida. You don't have any family out here? No. Well, my daughter and my baby daddy, that's it. I'm, that's, that's the only child you have? No. How many kids do you have? Four. Where are the other three? In Florida. With who? Well, my son just recently moved from Florida to North Carolina with his grandma. With his who? With his grandma. Oh, okay. On his dad's side. What about the other kids? They were with their dad in Florida. Yeah. Do you, do you call to talk to them sometimes? No, I, I can't talk to them. Yeah, that's a topic that's too tough for you to talk about, right? All right, I'm sorry. So let's talk about favorite childhood memories. Do you have any? Mm. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know you got one of the favorite childhood memories you can think of. If you don't, it's cool. I know people who don't. No, I do. I just can't talk about it. You can't think of it right now? No, I can't. I just don't talk about it right now. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So let's talk about school. I got a, my associates in science in college, and that's it. Oh, wow. No, Very stop. smart. Science. Well, I did like two and a half years of nursing program and then I dropped out. Like, I didn't finish my nursing, but I finished my, my associates. Well, I used them for a while, a little bit, but, you know, I don't know. Don't you want to get back into that field again? Maybe not medical, because I didn't really like that. My foster mom was like, you always have jobs, go medical. And I didn't, wasn't interested, so it didn't keep me in it. You know, I didn't keep my nose in it. Yeah. But if I could have changed my major, maybe to like, you know, Mm -hmm. Chemistry or just like psychology, something like that. I probably would have did. Yeah. Or be a barber. I want to be a barber right now. Oh yeah, you nice to cut here. Yeah, I want to go get a, my barber's tip. Yeah. yeah, you should. I'm looking at your style right now. You style. You got <laughs> some sauce crazy. to you, right? Okay, so let's talk about Kensington, right? Let's talk, let's talk about your current situation right now. What is it? Um, just me and my baby daddy, we kind of ran a basement apartment in Junietta, which is near Kensington. Um, with his, well, with the roommate, um, which owns the house, which is his best friend, you know. And he's running around getting high, the best friend is, with, with me and the baby daddy. Yeah. We've just been, for a year now, just running around, like, you know, trying to get a hold of everything, trying to come up with a plan or something different to do. You know, like, we just recently got into a sub-program, like, we've been trying to, like, you know, get off the dope. It's just once the train hit the dope, it got harder. Hmm. You know, it's one thing to get on subs for the dope, but they don't nothing do anything for the train. And is that the only drug you're struggling out here with, Fat and No, meth's been my struggle for a long time, like 15 that, years. Oh, that's your, your main drug, meth? Yeah. How does that make you feel? It don't make you feel, I think. You don't feel nothing, just numbs you? Yeah. I'm what about, do it make you hallucinate? No, not me. I don't know. I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> but like, I don't know. But maybe in the beginning it did. Maybe. Like it make you stay up. You can't eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, Those are the negative side effects of it? Yeah, it make you probably paranoid. My child was already paranoid. <laughs> yeah. But, 
do you suffer from any medical condition? Uh, well, I don't know, I just got like a heart, my heart valves, like a clogged heart valve, and that's about it. And how are you treated when you go to the hospital? Um, well, they want to keep me on like IV antibiotics for like three months in a nursing home, like on Pickline or something. And I kept like checking out like every month I'll do and I check out because I can't stand there three months. Like, it's miserable. Three whole months. Yeah. So how has your time in Kensington been? How has that experience been like for you? Crazy. Crazy. Just, I went through a lot. We've been through a lot. A lot. The beginning was three years were the worst, you know? They were like, we went through blizzards out here, like sleeping in, you know, port breaking the porta potties at Provincial Point to sleep, and sleeping, jumping in drop boxes on rainy days to sleep, you know? Uh, like, crazy shit. Yeah, drop box, uh, somebody died trying to go into a drop box was, one time. Jump in them and sleep in there when it rained, yeah. when it was cold. The struggle was rare, right? Bandos, you know, yeah, like everything. The shelter, the, the couple shelters, there's like, they just come up with another couple shelter, like close by in, in Huntington, but I never really known of any like couple shelters, like where we could be together, you know? And like, I'm not good with being alone. Yeah, you don't like to be by yourself? No. That's I how don't you wanna. get, but that's how you get to know yourself when you're yeah, all alone. I know. When you're around other I mean, people, you pick up their behaviors and you Yeah, I know. Really. That's exactly right. But, yes. so what's a, uh, a day out here look like for you? We're almost done. What's 24 hours look like out here for you? 24 hours. Walk, 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 walk. <laughs> From my house, Tioga. Tioga, get money. Kensington, cop. Cop, get out of baby daddy, back to Tioga. Back to Kensington, back to Tioga. Back to Kensington, home. Maybe. So, Sometimes if you know you get enough money for the day. Like 120 bucks, maybe. Takes care of me and him in a day, every day. So what do you do for work? Everything and anything. It's a hustle. I don't, I don't boost any of my thing, though. It ain't never been my hustle. But my baby daddy, he mm -hmm. does that crazy shit. Like, he boosts, you know. Work on blocks and everything, you know. How are you treated out here? How do people treat you? Well, like a fiend, <laughs> I guess. You doing, really? Yeah, how, how are you treated? Mm, well, it depends on who you're getting treated by. Like, like stores, do, do people shame you out here? Well, yeah, when you're on like this side. Well, I live in Junietta, which is still walking home. I feel like everybody's looking at me, but you know, I like to get a break from like being over there all the time. I got tired of being out there all the time, you know? Yeah. So. Can you give us one horror story, a brief one? Craziest was my baby daddy, like the first or second year we were here, he had got, a lot of bad shit happened, you know, I can't really talk much about it because he'll probably kick my ass if he finds out I'm talking about this. But from him getting picked up, kidnapped, hit in the back of the head with a sea wrench, split his head open, had to cut his hair off, hog tied and put in the basement somewhere and had to escape, they were going to kill him. To every other two months, he's owing somebody money because he's like, getting robbed when he falls asleep with you know, working on the blocks and then mm. he's uh, having the stress to pay somebody back before they kill him. And it's always him stressing me out with, yeah. you know, somebody beating him up, trying to kill him, jumping in. We and him got jumped by a whole block one time and they like, I, my leg was messed up and they like stomped my leg and mm. was jumping him, six of them, and while one was stomping me and my leg and like I had to go get surgery in the hospital for like two months. and. Yeah, that's crazy. A whole bunch of just everything and anything. Yeah. So how do you stay safe out here now? I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> I just go with it. Okay. You get tough. So what What do you think trigger you to use drugs? What are your triggers? I've been doing ice since I was 15, maybe. That was my problem. And then I always did ice, you know. Oh, like I always kind of found a way to adapt it to my lifestyle like before where like nobody like seen it or knew I was doing it They just like I was doing it though like he but you know, that's when my ex when my my daughters took my girls and left because I was doing it behind his back and, You know and he knew because we were together of course, you know like but he and he downed me for and you know Act like it was the worst thing in the world and I, I just couldn't be around my kids and I 
you know, let him, give him permission to have him, and he took off with him. And then that ain't make nothing no better. So. Not true. Is there anything to change about your drug use? Yeah, I would like to get off dope. Well, probably meth too, yeah, but definitely the dope, you know. <laughs> definitely yeah. the dope. How, how are you feeling right now? Mm. Tired, hot. Heard that. All right, so we're about to get off topic, right? What are some things you love most about yourself? Um. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm caring, I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. Caring. When you look at yourself now, what do you see? I see. Um, I lost myself. You lost yourself. Yeah. You missed the old you. Yeah. Do you think you'll find your way back to the old you? Hopefully. I believe you will. I miss home, you know. Yeah. Can't you call back home and talk to your family to take you back home? I don't know. Like, I don't know the number. Like, it's been so long. I ain't talked to them in, like, five years, probably. And I'm sure they probably just worry about you. They don't know if you are alive. Yeah, they were looking what? for me all the time. Yeah. I, like, I talked to him once in Blue Moon, you know? It's yeah. just like, what you say, what you gonna say to him? Like, you know, they gonna be like, yeah. ask all the questions, what you gonna say? You know what I'm right. saying? So I just I avoid it, like, I guess. What are your short-term goals now? Um, well, right now we got in the sub-program, trying to, like, stay with, like, getting off the dope, and then from there it's, it should be cake, you know, hopefully. Yeah. You know, because then I feel better, and then, you know, mm -hmm. then real money, you know? Go, go to school for, you know, get my certificate, be a barber. If your friends or your family see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Mm -hmm. I love them. Anything else? No, that's it. Do you have a favorite band or artist you listen to? No. Okay. What are some of your favorite foods? Mm, I don't even know. Do you have a spiritual or religious belief? Yeah, I'm like non-denominational though, and just believe in God, I guess that's it. <laughs> Where do you believe you'll go when you die? Um, well, the waiting place till God comes back, you know. <laughs> okay. What do you want the world to know about you? Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, last question to take us home, right? Yeah. There are a lot of people in this world who judge people who struggle with addiction. What's your message for the world? Uh, be easy because you can make it worse. You know? If you want them to not be like that, then, you know, being judgmental ain't going to make it no better. It ain't going to make them change. It's just going to make that struggle harder. But then you become part of that. You more you become responsible for some of this struggle. That was loud as hell just Yeah, loud music everywhere here. <laughs> train, loud music, train, loud music. Are you used to it now? Yeah, now I guess. Yeah. I wouldn't know what it's like to go back to like normal calm living. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you're in need of that we can help you with? I wanna get my housing, hopefully. Like I've been on like on the waiting list for a while, I think. <laughs> yeah, just keep on checking in with them to make sure, you know, they still got you in rotation, all right? Yeah. So guys, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we um. out there. <laughs> Peace out.